Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. It's time for another edition of Comic Book Quickies! Comic Book Quickies is a segment where we take a look at some smaller comic material, from fruit pies to short stories to more fruit pies. Been a while since our last one, but rest assured, we've got a great one today. We're doing some celebrating and gazing into the depths of horror and intrigue. We've already got big shoes to fill, from Lex Luthor's 40 cakes to the flea market eating flea to the soggies to why Jedis can't fall in love. Will today's material live up to this legacy of insanity? Well, let's dig into some quick comic book material and see what new spore of madness awaits us. Welcome to a top the fourth wall where bad comics burn. Link card is gonna teach you all a lesson you won't learn. Brodsky, you're not the smartest. Life out, you're not an artist. Anyone who's had a bad comic published, it could be. As is our tradition, let's get things started with a Hostess comic. This one's not for fruit pies, but cupcakes. And, as we've seen, criminals go nuts for this stuff as long as it's Hostess anyway. Spider-Man in Break the Bank. Turns out Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2 was looking for fruit pies. We start things off in a bank, with an angry crowd yelling at a teller. The computer's been making the same mistakes on my bank statement for months! I'm mad! Oh, sorry about that. That's Henry Bemis' fault. We'll get him up here in a minute to answer for that. He's eating his lunch in the vault. Do you hear an air raid siren? They print the number so lightly on my passbook, I don't know who owes whom! I worked too hard for my money to put up with this. Today's the day I get even! Wow, a lot of people are pissed off at this bank. Just imagine what the next person who walks in is gonna do. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. The one responsible for all this is... Printout Man. Yeah. Good! Get mad! Blame the bank! Pull out your money! Then I'll take over the bank! You magnificent bastard, I read your book! Me, the printout man! The one who's jammed all the computers that the bank is being blamed for! It's a good thing nobody knows my plan! Just imagine if I was yelling this out or something! Fortunately, Peter Parker just happens to be in line at this bank, and Peter soon spots trouble. He sneaks off and changes into his costume. Go! 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 My mad computers whir away while I rob the bank, the customers, and this crazy insect who bugs me! Wait, does he know that Spider-Man uses this bank? I'll do more than bug you, I'll bag you! Did you want paper or plastic for your loot? Error, Spider-Man! Reprogram yourself! It's a different kind of world. You need a different kind of software. Reprogram yourself? What the hell does that even mean? And by the way, I didn't notice this until now, but Printout Man? His outfit is a punch card. A punch card! I made fun of the calculator's outfit back during Blue Skying, but at least he had some advanced technology at his disposal. Printout Man is being outclassed by the Tandy Computer Whiz Kids. When the guy from Time Chasers has more advanced computer tech than you, seek help! Hell, why is he even called Printout Man when nothing about him is a printout? Anyway, he flees to the bank vault, but inside is in fact... A pile of Hostess cupcakes. You selfish creature! Stealing people's money is bad enough, but this is unforgivable! You diseased maniac! No jury will convict me after I'm done with you! 
What good is super wealth if I can't have all the great hostess cupcakes in the city under my private lock and key? Look, printout man, is this just a bid for attention? Are you an ex-con who just can't handle it on the outside? Talk to me, man, because this, this is just sad. So yeah, he gets hauled away and Spidey starts distributing cupcakes for some reason. This should wake everybody up and deprogram Printout Man forever. Wake everybody up? They were perfectly awake. They were yelling at the bank teller. Hooray, Hostess Cupcakes. Better than money in the bank. Which is why I'm sure Hostess just gives this stuff away for free. And now, Excerpts from the Super Dictionary with that guy with the hat. Million. Catwoman wants a million dollars. She wants one million dollars. It's a lot of money, Catwoman. I said last week that we were going to celebrate another franchise's 20th anniversary. Turns out a lot of nerd franchises have a big milestone this year, but unfortunately I really can't devote a lot of time to all of them, especially when some are closer to my heart than others. Still, I'd be remiss if I didn't do something related to Beast Wars and its 20th anniversary. If you're unfamiliar with Beast Wars, following on from last week, you can think of it as Transformers The Next Generation. I'd say it takes place in the far future just like Star Trek TNG, but that's not entirely accurate. A group of Maximals and Predacons, descendants of the Autobots and Decepticons, have traveled through time and are now stuck on prehistoric Earth and fighting each other for dominance, eventually even getting into conflict over the ship housing the Autobots and Decepticons as they slumber for millions of years, waiting for their eventual awakening in the original cartoon. The CGI is of course dated by today's standards, but its greatest strength was in its writing, with epic plots, character development, and, of course, the greatest Megatron ever. Yes. So naturally, the very first Beast Wars comic has nothing at all to do with that. It's a six-page mini-comic that was included along with the original toys for Optimus Primal and Megatron, who are in completely different forms than in the TV series. For a tiny little comic, the cover is okay. Nothing spectacular, but Optimus and Megatron facing off against each other, and Megatron proving he's a lousy shot even at point-blank range. I've read that this version, having been made before the animated series, seems to imply that these are the original Optimus Prime and Megatron just in new forms. But none of the actual info in the comic or in the bios really backs that up all that much. I don't know, maybe it's more something you read between the lines or some other promotion emotional material I haven't seen. Anyway, we open in a jungle. A silent shadow rises. Aren't shadows usually silent? What does a loud shadow sound like? Gliding above the darkened jungle floor. We can't stop here. This is bat country. A bat so massive it threatens to eclipse the moon. Gotta say, guys, Pokemon Sun and Moon look really damn awesome. Following behind the bat is a cheetah and a wild boar. The wild boar, one of the most feared of jungle predators. Actually, from the brief research I did, wild boars are apparently omnivores and their animal prey doesn't get much bigger than snakes, fish, and rodents. Although I suppose this is just the marketing department trying to sell us Pumbaa as an action star. Optimus uses sensors to detect a large structure in the jungle and writes off the alligator swimming near it, which soon attacks him with its tail. You may have located our genetics lab, but you'll never survive to see its secrets inside. Yes, Kiss players will be a reality primal. Nothing can stop it. The Maximals maximize and the Predacons terrorize, revealing both groups in their robot forms, including the boar, of course. Although, with the echo lines for these guys to simulate transformation, the boar actually looks like a centaur in this art. Anyway, Optimus Primal exposits. Our biogenetic morphing process has allowed us to create the perfect fusion of organic musculature and Transformers technology. This is in spite of the fact that the mechanical stuff is stronger and longer lasting than the organic bits. Why did we do this again? As have we, but my genetically altered Predacon robots were created with the DNA from Earth's most vicious life forms. Well, by this comic's logic, doesn't that mean that the Predacons should have the wild boar? 
Also, Cheetor and Waspinator are apparently shooting energy blasts at each other that explode behind Optimus and Megatron. Well, that's how we really know that this is out of continuity. Waspinator doesn't get blown up once in this thing! And despite the fact that the battle just started, Optimus has already declared that the Predacons are weakening. Perhaps, but your Maximals will never make it into our lab! And I guess Megatron blows up his own lab? Uh, you know, Megatron, if you have the power to do that, maybe you could have let the Maximals go into the lab and then blown it up? You may have won this battle, but the Beast Wars have just begun! We'll be back in any form, at any time! We could fuse two animals together, or suddenly have transmetallic vehicle modes or something! I could have roller skates. Yes. So, when you least expect it, expect the Predacons! Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to sharpen my two very large teeth. Why do I even have these? And now, excerpts from the Super Dictionary with that guy with the hat. Care. Aquaman and his young friends care for the fish. They look after the fish. When Aquaman went away, his friends cared for the fish. Aquaman's friends care for Aquaman. They like him. Next up, instead of another fruit pie comic, we have a little advertisement comic. A freakish one. Kenner reveals how the gang caught Spyromania. Oh, oh, Spyromania is running wild! It begins with, good God, that kid's eyes! You know, we focus so much on Youngblood's disease that we forget that there are other illnesses out there, like Spyromania, which replaces your eyes with multicolored circular patterns. And geez, they even go outside the boundaries of his head. I'm not unconvinced that his eyes are just gone and the spirographs are floating in front of where his eyes would be. Wow, look at Billy! Yeah, it happens every time he starts to draw with his spirograph. The doctors haven't been able to figure it out. His family goes to sleep every night in tears. Look at that great design. And he draws so fast. See, the part that's even creepier is that he didn't use a spirograph to draw that. And the two say in unison, Boy, I wish we could... And lightning zaps them? My god, it's the wizard Shazam! He's responsible for this! This does take on the makings of a Captain Marvel comic if you assume that the three here are Captain Marvel, Mary Marvel, and Captain Marvel Jr. See the Marvel family take on Dr. Savannah and his plan to conquer the world with spirographs. But yes, with that lightning strike, the two other kids are now infected with this horror. We, we want, want to, to draw, draw like you, you Billy. Billy. Come play with us. After an explanation of how a spirograph works, Billy informs us he even has something new to show them. Super Spirograph! Super Spirograph that makes bigger and even more beautiful designs! Golly! Golly. Now go out there and spread my dark vision, guys! Later, all three have fully succumbed and are working with the Spirographs. Gee, you, you just, just can't, can't leave Spirograph, spirograph alone. alone! Strength is irrelevant. Resistance is futile. Okay, we need to ground ourselves a bit after that insanity, and I don't think fruit pies are really the answer. Okay, how about this? It's another ad comic. In the never-ending battle against children's tooth decay, two heroes stand out above all others as the guardians of good dental hygiene. Oh, Captain Blood Loss! No, of course it's Colgate Jr. and Captain America. Yeah, the captain is well known for his dental hygiene? We'll get to Colgate Jr. in a moment. But yes, their true enemy, whom we sadly do not see in this comic, is Count Placula. But of course, we all know that it's not Captain America, nor even Colgate Jr., who is the arch nemesis of Count Placula. It's Dr. Crest. I'm not a real character! So yeah, let's take a look at Colgate Jr. and good lord. 
Well, he's not quite as insane as the Kool-Aid man, since he seems to have a proper body, but why the hell is there toothpaste coming out of his head? Is that supposed to be his hair? And what's with his star dandruff? And check out his eyes. This is the end result of Spiromania, guys. How does Captain America even know this guy? Did Nick Fury invite him to join the Avengers too? Anyway, they're with a bunch of kids and they're on a field trip to the Dental Museum on Molar 3. They're inside someone's mouth? Hey, this museum guide says you're the first star-shaped toothpaste with sparkles. Wait, Colgate Jr. is a museum exhibit? You belong in a museum. I don't know where I am right now. Let's head over to the spaceship for one final check. Oh, oh, they're, they're not in a mouth. No, of course, they're, they're, they're in space. Oh, how silly of me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm not even mad because we finally have one of life's greatest mysteries solved. How did Jello Man get into space? He hitched a ride with these guys. A great weight has been lifted from my mind. However, a danger warning soon goes off about the dental museum being under attack by Count Placula. Wait, they're not on Molar 3? Where'd they get the museum guide then? But yeah, they take off and we can see Colgate Jr. in full. Apparently he moves like a slug. Behold Colgate the Hut. And thus it ends with a to be continued in another ad comic. A date with the Count. Well, I'm sure Count Placula will take you to a nice movie on your date and buy you candy at least. Cap, activate the star-shaped power gel. You know, every week I do this show and I think I've seen everything. And then we have a spaceship powered by toothpaste. So, what have we learned this week? We've learned that punch cards want a million dollars, but they have a lot in common with Megatron for their stupid plans, and that they should really just fuel up on toothpaste or else they'll catch Spiromania. And they like him. Next week is the 400th episode, and I've got a feeling it's gonna be even crazier than this. Cap, activate the star-shaped power gel! Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel! Load it with the words! Dr. Crest, but on the movie night set? Well, that doesn't make any sense. What the hell? Saris? What are we doing in Linkar's apartment? because I teleported you here. Oh, don't stop on my account. I'll wait until you're finished. You really don't handle surprises well, do you? Your face doesn't handle surprises well. Uh-huh. Your name is Aaron, yes? Well, my full name is... And I'm sorry, you are... Pissed off? She's Saris. How did you know what my name is? I know people in the government. Hi, kid, though. I didn't have to escalate it that far. No, I got your name thanks to your business card you left with us. Aaron's Antiques. You're an internet reviewer. Guilty as charged, although not a very successful one. It seems people like comic books more than hearing about strange artifacts. I would argue with you about how popular, or rather not popular, my show is, but that's neither here nor there. What is of interest to me, though, is the artifacts thing. Artifacts that, as far as I can tell, you steal. Borrow? I always return them afterwards. Speaking of, I recorded the one on your coin, and I drained off the excess magic. 
So, it should be safe for another few years. Thank you. You know, you saved my bacon last Halloween. Purely by accident, but thanks. You're welcome. From what I've seen of your show, you seem to know a lot about the pieces you borrow. <laughs> I like a good story, and our world has so many of them. Ancient monsters, interdimensional incursions, wizards, warlocks. Hell, fictional characters will sometimes pop out of nowhere and attack people. Yeah, I don't pretend to understand that either. Rumor has it, we live in a plot hole. May you live in interesting times. I could give a lecture on that phrase, but my time is precious. So here's my question. What do you want? I want to hire you. You could have just called? I could have, but considering you broke into my place twice with the intent to steal from me, I thought I would show off what I can do. Interested in a job? I'm not exactly that skilled a video editor, but... I could give it a shot. No, 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 no. I want to employ you as an historian of the strange and mythical. I think that could be arranged, but why now? After you left, I had an encounter. Maybe it was just a lingering hallucination. Maybe it was something else. But knowing my luck, it was probably a new enemy. And considering the magic coin may be tied into this, I think I need some knowledge and expertise not normally available to me. Someone, or something, is playing a larger game, and I think it's time I took it seriously. Alrighty, I'll be in touch. You can beam us back now. Before you go, your first assignment. What's this? Some code? We think so. It's a copy of a message we received a few years ago. I figure with your knowledge of ancient lore and codes, you might be able to figure out something that we haven't. I'll give it a shot, but first, I've got a video to record. So does this mean we're actually going to get a paycheck for once? Hush, you. I'm just saying, I really want to accessorize my look a bit, and clothes of my size aren't cheap. 